Magic City and the U.S. Poker Championship, the home to some of the game's most powerful and lasting images. 2003, Toto Leonidas outboxes Phil Hellmuth and Eric Seidel to take down the title. 2004, it's John Diagostino's unforgettable million chip meltdown. And in 2005, two poker playing pals from Long Island, James Caparuccio and Ralph Peccarali, shocked the poker world with their stunning 1-2 finish. And now a record field is gathered to write the next legendary chapter. The 2006 U.S. Poker Championship begins now. Welcome inside the Trump Taj Mahal and the 2006 United States Poker Championship. Hello, everybody. I'm Lon McCarron, along with Norman Chad. This year's United States Poker Championship boasts another record field and a record purse. Over $2.5 million is up for grabs. But the big question making the rounds this year has to do with last year's storybook finish for two friends from Long Island and whether or not they can repeat their incredible performance. Last year, Lon, home game buddies James Caparuccio and Ralph Peccarali finished 1-2. They're back, and they've brought four more players from their Long Island home game. Hey, maybe they can get their own dealer and table. Also in the field, 2006 World Series main event champion Jamie Gold, 2005 main event runner-up Steve Daneman, 2004 world champion Greg Raymer, and 2003 USPC winner Toto Leonidas. A lot of sharks swimming in these choppy waters. Almost $900,000 going to this year's winner. To get our action underway, let's meet a few of the players who will be seated at our feature table. Victor Ramden, Bronx, New York. Vadim Trincher from New York, New York. Stephen Daneman from Severn, Maryland. Chad Moore, Frankfurt, Indiana. So this 2006 U.S. Poker Championship gets underway. Everyone starts with 20,000 chips. It was a $10,000 buy-in. We're at our arena table, and the whole cards of Frank Lindner, ace, queen of diamonds. Great. Let's say everybody at this arena Great. table on looks guilty of something. <laughs> the blinds are at 25 and 50 chips. Lindner raised it up to 150. Action folds around to Brett Ritchie with a couple of deuces. He makes the call. Steve Daneman, the World Series of Poker runner-up in 2005, folded. And that is Roland Isra with pocket queens. Isra is going to re-raise it to 450. Action folds around to Frank Lindner. Made the original raise to 150. And he'll join the party, as does Richie. Three players to the flop. Isra's queens have the lead. And now the flop is queen 6-6. Six, six. Isra flops a full house. Pretty good start to his USPC. Not as a good start for Linder, who's got top two pair with top kicker. Linder with queens up, does bet 1,500. And Isra sitting over there with the nuts. He looks suspicious. He'll make the call. Richie got out of the way, so these two will go heads up to the turn. Four of hearts, no help to Linder. I put my glasses on. Good idea. I don't want to show a towel. Oh, but you just did? In fact, you have told us everything. <laughs> and from Linder's position, really nothing much to worry with that small four coming out. Uh, but nothing like starting your day at the USPC arena table by betting on the turn, drawing dead. That is Linder's position right now. Roland Isra with a full house, playing it for all he can get. Right, double checks to make sure he has the full house. He calls. And he just calls. And he'll slow play it again. All right, so we'll go to the river. Linder drawing dead. Three of clubs. Linder first to act. It's going to be a short tournament for us. I check. Who knows? They might get all their chips in. He checks. Isra now. No, actually, Lon, Isra has a tell, I believe. He reaches for chips before he bets them. <laughs> Isra taking his time. He does put in 4,500. 45. Linder with queens up. But second best. You want to call? I've never grown fond of this do you want to call business we've heard the last few years, Lon. Everyone's Detective Sipowitz now from NYPD Blue. You're going to sweat the perp in the box? Yes, he does want to call, Frank. Mm. All right. I guess I'll donate. Frank will hey, donate. And Roland Isra shows him the queen's pull. Good Hollywood. Good Hollywood. And Isra gets out of the gate quickly here at the USPC. Nice Hollywood. A big hit to the chip stack of Franklin. 
Jamie Gold's here might sign you up. Good hand. And speak of the devil, there's Jamie Gold, the reigning world champion. Never at a loss for words. And this very diverse field includes heavyweights like Mark Safe, always aggressive and a tremendous table presence, and Gavin Smith, who has over $3 million in tournament winnings. And the current World Series Ladies Event champion, Mary Jones, heads a strong contingent of women here in Atlantic City, including Kathy Liebert and the always bubbly Jennifer Lee. I didn't have juices, I promise. 100%. <laughs> And veteran Scott Fishman heads a host of young and talented players like Michael DeMichel and Alex Jacobs. I tried to look into his soul, but I just it was unavailable. Yeah. Maybe he has no soul. Maybe he's uh, the animal. Who's having a devil of a time early on. All right, let's move to the feature table in the Taj Mahal poker room. Six players going to the flop. Adam Levy leads with pocket tens. Greg Raymer, the former world champions in his hand. I wish I could see the percentage right now on the screen. <laughs> It doesn't matter what the screen says. It's 100% me. Well, the screen says it's 12% Raymer right now, which is in the neighborhood of 100%, I guess. <laughs> the flop is 7-10 deuce. Levy hits another 10 for trips. And Raymer went the wrong way on 2%. At least he's not Josh Timon. A couple of checks over to Levy, who bets 600 with his trips. And Kevin Mason folds, as does Chris Orndorff. Now to Greg Raymer. Middle pair. He'll make the call. And Mooney right behind him with a gut shot straight draw. He'll make the call. And Timon gets out of the way. So three players go to the turn. Levy with a big lead. Now the turn card. Nine of hearts. Levy still leads, but Mooney with a little encouragement. Pairs his nine. And Raymer picks up an up and down straight draw, so he's inching his way to 100%. Levy bet 2,000 after Mooney checked. And Raymer's going to play. Now Mooney gets out of the way. Raymer and Levy heads up to the river. Raymer with a lot of makeup work to do. The river card is a deuce. Raymer missed his draw. Levy gets the check mark. Levy with the full house. And he bets 4,500 to Raymer. And Fossil Man now at 0%. I believe that number might sink in eventually. <laughs> The Raymer with some final thoughts, but he does fold. Levy wins the pot. I don't know where to look. Can't stare at So Falselman Glass is apparently still having their hypnotizing effect on his opponent. All right, let's move over to the featured table in the arena. And we see Roland Isra, who is top dog at this table for the moment. I don't think he's going to see my cards. 9-10 go into the muck. Another couple of folds. Action over to Frank Lindner, who is being a bit coy about his pocket cards, but he'll call the big blind, as does Victor Ramden. It's always a little chilly here in the arena table, Lana. I'm surprised to see short sleeves. I'd be in a parka with leg warmers. Nice look for you, I think. Brett Ritchie and Steve Daneman also limp in, and so four players to the flop. And the flop is 8-8-8. Eight, eight, eight. Wow, Brett Ritchie flop quad eights. Ritchie, a 25-year-old from New Jersey in the rap group Dream Clone, gets his dream flop. And checks. Dannenman checks. Lindner checks. Ramden bets 200. And then Ritchie raises it up to 700. Victor Ramden picking a bad time to represent something. Dan Inman and Lindner got out of the way. Ramden makes the call, a non-believer that Richie has the eight. Turn is a queen of diamonds. Of course, Ramden drawing dead. Richie bets 1,100. And if Victor continues here, then he's just believing that his ace is best, and he does. He does have just ace high. Deeper into the dark tunnel, he ventures. Richie's found his sugar daddy and rammed in a four of diamonds on the river. Richie again first to act. And he's going to make it 3,500 this time. Richie trying to make no false moves. And in trying to be nonchalant, he looks pretty stiff to me. He does indeed. Ramden is reaching for chips. He can kiss anything he throws into the pot. Goodbye. He makes the call. He will lose. And Richie shows the quads. And that's a nice start to this USPC for Brett Ritchie. Was your heart really racing when that happened? Could you believe it? 
Welcome back to the Trump Taj Mahal. And you see Roland Isra is off to a good start here at the feature table in the arena. And Victor Ramden is the short stack at this table right now. Bananas. How could they do that? Whole cards of Steve Daneman. Ace eight of clubs. Richie's already in the hand with a raise to 175. Daneman makes the call. Over to Isra, who gives up his cards. Now Vadim Trencher makes the call with 10-7 of hearts. And Victor Ramden, ace nine of hearts, will play. Ramden won a WPT event in Foxwoods a few months ago, picked up $1.3 million. Four players to the flop, nine ace. Jack Ramden with aces up. Daneman paired his ace. Got a penalty. Trencher inside straight draw, and Richie with a pair of jacks. Steve Daneman makes the call. Trencher will get out of the way. And the aggressive Victor Ramden raises it to 2,000. Richie folded. Daneman counting out the call. Cost him 1,400 more. So heads up, going to the turn. Turn card 10 of clubs. Daneman picks up straight and flush draws. Great turn card for Daneman. Ramden will come out with 2,000 chips. And Steve Daneman will make the call. River card now, King of Spades misses Daneman. Both checks. This is up. And Ramden will win the pot. And Daneman takes a last look at what might have been for him before he mucks his hand. Ramden no longer the short stack at this table. He's in the middle of the pack. Ah, what a river card. 